It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, you can see behind me, I got Ed McLaughlin. I love having Ed on the end of the day with Ray. But before I get started, I want to use one of my Ray-isms to kind of drive the direction of this talk we're going to have. You know, I said a long time ago that a company becomes obsolete when they focus on bringing the past to the future instead of bringing the future to the present. And Ed, I want to talk a little bit about that, but how are you doing, my friend? Doing wonderful. Couldn't be better, Ray. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's great to have you, Ed. You know, you're an icon in the industry. You, you've been through a lot of turmoil, as they say, over the years. Um, this isn't the first crisis the, the channel's had, but obviously it, yeah. it's, it's a pretty big crisis and it's aligning with, with the advances in technologies themselves. You know, I don't know if you were able to see the uh, Zach's report that came out, which kind of showing where the industry is. It's not a very, you know, exciting report to read. Um, the financials, the financials are going to come out and hit the street here. Xerox, I think, is next uh, next week. Konica and Kia Cirrus next week. So we'll kind of see where the industry is laying out. But Ed, I got to be honest with you, it's a little bit disturbing sometimes. I see some of the surveys that we're seeing out there, and it seems like we're trying to save yesterday and deliver that into tomorrow. You've been around a long time. Can you tell, help us out and help the dealers out? And really, what are we looking at? What does tomorrow really look at from your opinion? Well, you really want to get a good look at tomorrow. Start looking clearly at what's going on today. Mm -hmm. you, got to look at, you have to look at today with, uh, without rose-colored glasses. What really is going on? You know, as you've said, I've seen a lot of change and transition in, in this industry since I first entered it in 1969. And um, this, quite honestly, is the most significant change that I've seen in that, in that period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not something that's going to go away. The crises that have occurred in the past were temporary. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a permanent change in, in the trajectory and a, and a major inflection point in our industry. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, we have to start adjusting the way that we do things accordingly. Uh, it's just not going to be the same and, and it's not going to be the same for a while. So finding ways to reposition the people to process ratio mm -hmm. is, is, a, is a very important step. And, and Ray, as you know, we've had these conversations many times. I'm not one of these guys like, if you don't do this, you're going to go out of business. Mm -hmm. This is the only answer. All that stuff is bullsh mm -hmm. bullshit. We've you know, had I some obituaries care. out there for sure. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, it drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. But here's the reality. It, you may be in business, but in order to maximize your profitability, your positioning, your ability to compete, your ability to grow, you have to adjust to the realities of today, mm -hmm. which means you've got to find a way to automate your business and automate processes. We've talked about automation and many people think they've done automation mm -hmm. for quite some time, but, in, but re really they haven't done it. What we've done is we've taken a, a whole glut of data, dumped it into our organization and we put masses of people together to pull it apart and analyze it, to turn it into knowledge so we can do something with it. Mm -hmm. We have to actually go out and make the effort to find the type of, of software packages and support mechanisms that will do the heavy lifting for us. Mm -hmm. And we have to do something that will absolutely change the process to people ratio. It just has to, it, it's, it's a must be step in order to maintain your level of profitability, either that or completely change your process and become a services based business. And we've been talking mm -hmm. about that for a long time too. Mm -hmm. 10 years. Being customer centric, account centric versus transactional is a difficult change. And if you're not halfway through the process now, the first step I would do before I even began to make those steps to, to transition, which I think is my personal opinion is it's a necessary step. Mm -hmm. There's other avenues to take, but for the profit model and structure of business and the way that you do business, I believe that's the right step. Mm -hmm. But, but, if you're going to make that step, you've got to streamline your existing core business today. And it's something you can do right now. It doesn't take a lot of time. You just have to take some, it takes a little bit of time and some discipline and stop reacting to things and stop long enough to sit down, look at it, analyze it, and make the right decisions. 
Let me ask you a question, Ed. So let's say you're a dealer owner, you're in that $20 million dealership, $10 million dealership range, and you're looking for some human capital that you can bring in to kind of help you with those processes. Where should they look? I mean, because here's quite frankly, when I look inside the space today, there's, there's, there's a lot of consultants out there, but for the most part, they spend a lot of time telling these dealers what they wanted to hear, not what they need to hear. And it, which is a little scary. You see some of the surveys that are coming out and the questions that are being asked and it's, they're not really diving into the what ifs to, enough, I think. Well, here, here's the but, problem with surveys. I mean, I don't want to disrespect surveys mm-hmm. and I think surveys have a value, but we have to understand what that value is. Mm-hmm. The survey is, is the collective summary of the collective opinion of everybody that's already in the trenches. Mm-hmm. And, and while that has some value, because it really tells us where everybody believes they are mm-hmm. and where they believe they're going, it doesn't necessarily represent what the right, the right path is. Mm-hmm. So, and it's not easy for a consultant or anybody else to sit back and just categorically give general advice to, to a whole group of people, because quite mm-hmm. frankly, everybody's in a slightly different position. Yep than somebody else. Uh, Someone's at a different progression in their business. Their ratios are different than somebody else's. Uh, You know, Hanson and Hay have been around for a long time. They do a great job in really analyzing and looking at the people that only take so many people on. Mm -hmm. But even in that case, when we're looking at the Johnson model, my my honest opinion is that the ratios have to change. Mm -hmm. I've had conversations with people in the past about this. I think... Now, based on on the results of what's happened with the pandemic and the process changes and work methodology changes that are occurring uh, are are permanently changing that model. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to look beyond that. And we're going to have to look in order to maintain the bottom line profit, which is really what that model is all about. How Mm -hmm. do you take the whole infrastructure and and break it down so that you finally get to this sort of the inverted uh, pyramid. So we've done all these things and now we end up with this amount of money at the, at the end. That's going to change. It's mm-hmm. already changed. And uh, you, you're just not going to have the margin opportunity in the machines because the machines, they don't mm-hmm. mean as much to anybody anymore. Or the service and, for this, as far as that goes. We've seen the well, decline in that. still means the same mm-hmm. thing, but it's going to cost you more to get there. Mm-hmm. And you can't afford it. You've got to get more, you have to derive more profitability out of that. And the only way you're going to do it is through levels of efficiency. Mm-hmm. And you have to really understand where you are. I think Wes McCarter and those people have the best database mm-hmm. to really tell you where, where you are. In all honesty, most people I talk to, they don't even, even if they get the reports, they don't really understand the reports mm-hmm. and they don't look at the reports the right way. And, you know, maybe there's a lot of fault to go on as to why that is the case, but but quite frankly, they're too busy putting out fires every day yep. to take the time back to, to look at it. But it, it's something that needs to be done. Well, I think and it needs be to be done. <laughs> to find out what they, when they got, look into those numbers, they'd be shocked. Yeah, no, I agree. See what they want. Well, you know, I saw a recent survey as an example. And, you know, one of the problems with surveys, too, is if you don't have a basis of the survey, it's very, you know, convoluted. You know, if you have a million dollar, two million dollar dealership and you ask that dealership the same question as a $50 million dealership, even though they give the same answers, that's still two totally different businesses, two totally different processes. Well, it's a and, totally different perspective. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it certainly and, is. And whether or not, it depends upon what the question is, whether it's relevant mm-hmm. or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but some some questions that you might ask may not be very relevant mm-hmm. for a million dollar mm-hmm businesses they are for a hundred million dollars. Yeah. It's easy for a million dollar business to have a twenty percent increase in hardware. You know, versus well, a, number for, for, yeah, I mean yeah, it's so. easy to get a twenty percent increase you start out with five. Yeah, you know? pretty much. So there should be a basis, I agree with that. And that's kinda of why <laughs> you know, with, with Next Era is then to be a commercial for Next Era, but they you know they do have great data and, but it's also segmented so you can really understand it. And I think, you know, we note a lot of dealers, for instance, have have had elect technicians, you know, furlough technicians and, you know, a real question to start looking at is how many do I need to bring back and what do I anticipate that volume to be? And if you look inside mm-hmm. the data, it's it's pretty scary a little bit. I mean, we have to make some tough decisions, obviously, but I know you're there to help them. You always were. And I just, I just, it's a little bit, uh, and I'm not the, uh, I try to always write the prescription. I'm not the obituary guy, 
but you know sometimes conversations are tough to have obviously but you know well, you I, need the truth yeah I mean, I mean you need you truth. need to have truth and the truth is not easily attained no I mean there is a general truth but when you're talking about an organization improving itself you need specific truth mm-hmm. you need truth as it relates to them and the truth is not it's not something that just falls into your lap you have to dig for mm-hmm. it and it's not always obvious mm-hmm. and sometimes it's very painful yep well, especially if it's based on the market realities that we're all facing, and we'd really need to face them. Well, these market more. <laughs> realities are, I mean, look, every every opportunity brings a downside to it, mm-hmm. and and this situation is no different. Mm-hmm. This brings plenty of opportunity. There are loads of upsides here, mm-hmm. but if we go the traditional route, there's a lot of downsides, and we're going to have to figure out how to become extraordinarily efficient Mm -hmm. in order to survive or we're going to have to change some of the models well you know we you know we need to be in that services based business we all know that we need to be customer centric in how we deliverable not product centric Mm -hmm. we need not to be so in in bed with manufacturers and focus on our own businesses you know the direct operations are going to have their own pain points to go through but you know we all we you know the, the reality of it is we have to face these realities that we're in and start looking at data based on those realities and then migrate towards that data and if you can help them with that that's a home run you know that's what i want to do try to give dealers some help and i know that uh, you're, you're working on your new gig and you work with wes and his numbers you, you have other numbers you understand the hansen hayes model um, you know, I, I strongly suggest you reach out to people like Ed and get some different in, get some different opinions. Are you having dealers reach out to you just out of curiosity? I don't care who they are. I'm just uh, we, we, we've been we've been incredibly busy right now. Uh, we only launched in uh, on June first, and and very honestly, I'm I'm actually seeing new applications spring to the market beyond what we initially mm-hmm. launched with. I'm not ready to talk about it yeah. yet, but I think it can significantly change the way dealers go about doing business. Mm -hmm. Um, But the DCA piece that we have, uh, we're busy with demos every single day. And to my delight, there hasn't been a single solitary person that said, oh yeah, this is just me too. Oh, well, we've had some start out that way. Mm -hmm. We've had a few demos with people starting out saying, listen, what I've got, I've got this analysis that I do afterward, and I don't really like what I'm getting, but I'm getting all, I, I mm. do all this other stuff afterwards. And after they're done the demonstration, they go, yeah, you definitely have a superior product. Mm. Now my big question is whether I can afford it or not. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get into that conversation right now, but no. I can tell you, <laughs> uh, very honestly, we're highly competitive with a very premium product mm. that does things that, uh, and it thought through to the core in some ways, there's a couple pieces out there that have a prettier face, mm-hmm. but they don't have the character underneath. Well, you and know, we've got the pretty face and the character. Well, so, you need both. Uh, we're going to really, we're going to kick some butt here. Well, that's good. You know, it, it makes a significant difference, immediate payoff in the operations yeah. of the organizations once they utilize it. And uh, uh, we'll be talking about some significant signatures very shortly. Well, they've yeah. already pretty much committed that they're. Mm-hmm going this way so well you know the industry the industry needs change the industry needs new competition fresh blood sometimes that's good stuff so you know well, we i can tell you i mean very candidly I, I i do these i did these board things for about 15 years uh-huh. where I, I keep active i keep myself involved and this is the first time i said i'm, I'm writing the checks i'm dumping in myself mm-hmm. i know that's not something normally at this stage in, in one's career that one does but very honestly i do love this industry i mm-hmm. it, it's not only provided me with uh, an opportunity to support my family and to do well in life, uh, it's given me a, a platform and a place to learn. And and it's been ever-changing throughout the, the 50 plus years that I've been in this business. I've watched it change and I've been, I've been a part of the change. And mm-hmm. I've helped in some cases initiate and push some of the change. Mm-hmm. But it, it's constantly enlightening to me uh, because I've always understood that we're on that that knowledge side of the business that keeps the processes going. And I find it infinitely uh, interesting. Right. So uh, I don't ever want to stop. I, I want my, as I said before, 
I want my wake and retirement party to be the same day. Same day. Well, you're a testament to it, by the way. you're a testament uh, to someone that really loves the industry, obviously. And you know, you yeah. said it right there. You put your you put your money in it. You made your money in it. You're making your money in it now. And and you know that's the difference. Right now, I'm just right. Right now, I'm just writing checks. But that's yeah, okay. yeah. That all comes. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, that I'm turns not, around. I'm not looking for backing. I, I, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm perfectly happy to be doing this because I think there's. I don't think there's a need for it. With 50 years of experience, I know there was a need mm-hmm. for it. I saw it there, and I said, this is something that the industry needs, and it needs it now. So and a friend of mine said, what are you crazy getting into this mm-hmm. end of the business at this point in time? And I said, be, just because of this point in time mm-hmm. that I'm in this business. Well, like you said, challenges create. Didn't that be an ad, but. Well, hey, it's, it's that doesn't matter. Opinion. You know, it's my show. I can do whatever I want. I got to tell you, Ed, you know the reality of, <laughs> the reality of it you is. You know me. If you ask me a question, I'll <laughs> yeah. tell you whatever I want. Well, hey, so. challenges create opportunities. You know, you've had plenty of challenges in 50 years. You've, had, you've created plenty of opportunities out of those challenges over the 50 years. And I think it's not about the obituary. You're 100% spot on. It is, about, it is about the death of some concepts. It is about the death of some processes. It is about the fact that we have to reinvent some of those processes and reinvent we what we're doing. We have to adjust to today's yeah, reality. Absolutely. That's always been mm-hmm. the case. And many times it was a, a, a nicer adjustment because we saw the opportunity for growth immediately. Mm-hmm. But that's when paper was part of the process. And now uh, for the last... 15 plus years or more, 20 years or more. Now uh, that's changed. Mm-hmm. And now it's going to change even more. Yep. Because uh, how we go to work. And I don't, you know, many people think that this working at home is permanent. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. And I, I see permanent change come and go. Uh, <laughs> It's funny well, how permanent change doesn't last that long. Yeah, well, I would say it's going to be a big movement. It already was in a movement. It's a but, big mover. Yeah. And the tech, as the technology fully catches up to it, I think there is a transition. Mm-hmm. But we are also social animals, so mm-hmm. uh, we need to touch and be, be being part of the community. So I don't see this hibernation going on forever. Mm-hmm. I think we'll break out of it at some point in time. That's not the question, however. The mm-hmm. question really is, what are these changes impacting the economics and the need for the cost structure to adjust. Yep. We shouldn't get lost too far in the weeds. Mm-hmm. Step back, look at the big picture. It's the same thing if you go to an art museum. Uh, many of the better art museums have a, a line on the floor. Mm-hmm. And if you stand in that line, you get a, a total different perspective mm-hmm. of, the, of the painting. And the reason being that you take more of it in. Some people think if they go up really close and getting close to it, all you get to see is the brush strokes and things. And that might be interesting, but mm-hmm. you don't get the whole value until you step back and look at the whole picture. Great analogy. So perspective of what we need to do. It's, it's just part of life. It's not, it, no, nothing mysterious about it. It's just like everything else in life. Well, that's a great analogy. You know, Ed, I appreciate having you on. It's always great to have you on. Stay safe and healthy there in North Carolina. Can't wait to come play golf with you. Absolutely. Great course. A little wet right now, but uh, that's okay. I'm busy, so I don't have as much time. All right. Well, my friends, I'm going to end this the way I always do. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you tomorrow.